you. Lemon Dogs, of course, they were very, very confident and outspoken coming into the LCS, and we'll see now as they're coming up against another very, very strong team. And Eagle Geniuses, we're going to be seeing the Frog and Lux, which I know there are many, many fan favorites. So let's see how this early game goes. I do feel like that the Evil Geniuses roster is much stronger in the laning phase to mid game. And if we get to the super late game, the Vlad, Rise, Caitlyn combo, I, I think are going to be terrifying. So this is a ticking time bomb as far as EG are concerned. Well, let's have a look then. Evil Geniuses are going to get themselves into place for this one. Lemon Dogs also moving through pretty quickly here. And there is the Spirit Fire down. EG just hanging out of range of that one. A lot of pings on this top side. We are going to see We Will Fail go in there. Puts a ward in position. Oh, that so <laughs> halfway close. through the yep. job and the attack animation there. It goes out of sight. Doesn't, of course, finish it off after that. So they got the positioning and they kept the ward alive. I would love to ask somebody like Freak, who knows a little bit more about the mechanics of the engine, whether or not the attack animation was actually interrupted by a right click. Because it looked like it was going, and I believe if he'd let it, go through a finish, it would have still killed the ward, but I don't know the engine well enough at this point. Right now though, EG they almost face checked a bush full of lemon dogs and instead backed away wisely. Didn't run into it. Yep, they're gonna head straight off into the top side here of that lemon dogs jungle and set up somewhat of a trap and I don't think the Lemon Dogs have full vision on them. They have put a couple of pings in position, so they, they have a very good idea of where they are. Yeah, so they definitely would have seen them moving around into their jungle. And you can see by the positioning of the Lemon Dogs how defensive they're playing. Very, very importantly, nobody has recalled. That is a five-man death push. This is going to be a level one. Hey, Leveros is down, and there they go! This is going to be a crazy fight. Snoopy going very low, has to flash away already. Dexter himself will go low. And it looks like Lemon Dogs and EG don't want any more of this one, although... Lemon Dogs have gone around the top side of this red buff. Will they be able to challenge EG? They're going to try and get out. Snoopy just throwing the flag in there. The light finally will miss. Here they go. Snoopy going low. He will go down. Caitlyn picks up first slot. Now they turn around onto Wicked. Noob Dog flashes in there. It's another hit from Taz. And a double kill at the start. It's not over though. Yellow P has to flash away. There goes the Piltover Peacemaker. Not quite got the damage or the range to finish things off. And that will be a 2-0 start. Candex to get in there. You wouldn't imagine so at level one from Nasus, and all the action stops. And Caitlyn not only getting first blood, but getting a double kill, and everyone on the team got two assists as well. That basically seals the deal for whoever Caitlyn is going head to head with. And you can imagine that Tabs would want to go in the lane matchup against Yellow Pete, shut him down, spend some of that early gold, pick up maybe a Vamp Scepter or something like that, and just really completely, completely stamp your authority on the early game. That was a very aggressive play from Evil Geniuses and it backfired because of indecisiveness and a single Aqua Prism. Three members were locked up in that bubble from Nami. EG couldn't do anything, it took so much damage and they were forced to run away. Incredible start to this one, Lemon Dogs. I'll be licking their lips at the uh, force of taking down Evil Geniuses here, but we know from experience that the first blood, even a double kill at the start of a game, doesn't necessarily mean a free path to victory. We're going to have to see how this all works out in the long run. I uh, just want to have a quick look at, okay, 1,100 gold Tabs has to spend here after three and a half minutes. That is a serious chunk. So the fact that he hasn't gone back makes me think he may want to just stay in lane until he gets that 15-15 up for a BF sword. And if you can pick up like a 5 minute BF sword, that is crazy, crazy good. Combine that with the on-hit damage that Nami's going to be providing with her tight corners blessing the E, it's just going to shred Varus and Lulu. The shield that Lulu has is not going to be enough to save them from the continued headshot auto attack harass from Caitlyn. Incredible stuff here. And this one, bottom lane has been uh, a lot of exchanges going on. Zoro Zero just throwing out all of his nukes there, auto attacking as much to keep that shield down from Wicked whenever it does come back up into play. And he'll no doubt keep on that one. The CS is actually really level between them. Of course, Caitlyn is slightly ahead of Varus. We'll see how that one continues. Snoopy on your screen there with the double buff on. He went very, very low um, in that first exchange. Then he managed to get a bit of heal back up. And then he died afterwards, which at level one for the jungler sets you back a ridiculous amount. Yeah, just because of the amount of time that you lose not only for farming. Krep has been bubbled! Oh, he's in a lot of trouble here. Tab's actually going in there. See, exhaust down and yellow feet actually putting down a good amount of return damage there. And that will force um, Tabs to back away somewhat from that. Now, I want to point something out. If Tabs had recalled when his wave was at the tower, spent some more money on a Vamp Scepter or another oh, door's Oh, no, in the middle as well. 
Got it very, very low. Had to uh, pull out of that one. Sorry, I thought he might have gone down. The Ignite was in there as well from Frog, but not quite that extra tick. Not just not enough. And if Tabs had had that additional uh, attack damage earlier, that would have been a dead Crepo. It would have been more damage on the tower. So that gambit of waiting for the BF Sword will now have to see if it pays off because they missed an opportunity already. Yeah, that opportunity was there to make him three for zero. And he is coming back in with that BF Sorted. They have to be real careful about this one. It's down in the bottom lane. Wicked might be in a bit of trouble. Dexter starting to come into this one. And he's just hit level four. And I think he just leveled Wither there as well, literally, as he came into the lane. Which, you know, if you're going to gank with Nasus, you pretty much need that Wither. Yeah, you have to. Unless you have some form of, you know, crowd control outside of that room prism, he's eventually just going to seismic shard up one of your champions, most likely the melee, and just walk away from a lot of that damage. So he does manage to get to safety. Up in the top lane, Tabs has returned with that BF sword. Oh, look at the bottom. There's the fight. Yeah, going in there. Zoro Zero actually falling quite low. Wicked, though. Will go low himself. A lot of minions bashing away. Snoopy comes in no from the side. Can they go in there towards Zoro Zero? He's going to walk north as Dexter throws down that spirit fire. A very even battle there in the bottom lane. This top lane, though, now becomes a lot more interesting with that BF sword in play. So this becomes basically now impossible for Yellow Pete based on the, the numbers. Yellow Pete on Varus has seven, no, 820 hit points. Caitlyn currently hits for 139 attack damage per hit. Uh, I'm going to quickly check her runes. She's got 13 armor penetration as well, so she'll be hitting for a good chunk of that, 100 to 115 or so. That's seven auto attacks before her headshot passive and before the Tide Caller's Blessing. See how much HP Yellow Feed lost from that single auto attack? Because the shield is up, there was no further attacks. Yeah, they didn't want to waste the ability on that. There is Snoopy just hanging around that middle lane, of course. Snoop Duck didn't use the Ghost or his Flash earlier on. We should probably mention that they decided not to go in for that Ignite. Uh, you know, Vladimir's... It, the, the Ghost is actually really good because it synergizes with his pool as well, uh, which, you know, keeps that movement speed up, uh, speed up as you go through. So a lot of people will go with that with an Ignite or a Flash and the Ignite. This time around, Nuke looks like Flash and Ghost. I do not want to get caught. And that's basically because of the composition, because of how important Vladimir is to the Lemon Dogs comp. He cannot afford to get killed in these team fights. He's basically the the saving grace, as it were, from the team, because once the, all the ultimates hit, he's the one that's going to be at the most HP and going to be the one that needs to either soak the damage or clean up the fight. So it's a, it's a pretty smart play, and it'll actually end up being used aggressively once they do start these bigger 5v5 team fights. Things slowing down a little bit now. We've got the challenge built up for Malphite, and that crystalline flask, and a lot of pink wards for evil geniuses here, which it's actually quite interesting because one thing we didn't really talk about is the fact that Wicked has that teleport. Now, having those pink wards, you can clear out the vision. Yellow P actually getting hit there by the ace in the hole was pulled up by the bubble as well from We Will Fail, but Tabs had already gone out of range to get any more auto attacks in. Meanwhile, down in the bottom lane, Wicked once again is taking damage from Zoro Zero. Dexter has worked his way into that back brush as well. Now he just reveals himself. Yeah, basically, he just comes up, tries to push that lane out a little bit quicker. It allows uh, Rise uh, being played by Zoro Zero to put some pressure down. Now I have to give mad props to Yellow Pete. He survived the last three or four minutes of Onslaught and is keeping even on CS with Tabs' Caitlyn, which is a very, very difficult thing to do. They were able to push that wave out and instead of going for the tower, Dexter and Zoro Zero are just going to two-man up this dragon. That Nasus ultimate is just so, so powerful yeah. and it just shreds down the HP of dragon. Yeah, okay. that's it. I mean, they're not going to be fast enough to react to it. Chances are they're not even going to have a ward down at that stage once Nasus hits level 6, gets a bit of health and he can get that one finished off. So, good little uh, 2,000 gold lead right now for Lemon Dogs, a team which started off nicely with a win against Meet Your Makers, uh, not Meet Your Makers, uh, Ninjas in Pajamas, that's the one, and then went on to lose two following games to that one already here today. They have another one to play today afterwards as well, so you know, they got a lot of uh, games today, which means that a win here would probably boost their confidence no end. Yeah, and the, the start is the best thing that they could have asked for because they've come off the back of the, the back of back-to-back -back losses. Uh, they needed something to just get the wheels, you know, turning and get them working uh, in favour. And the bottom lane, it does look like Wicked is going onto Zara Zero, and basically Zara just walks away, spamming out those overloads as he was walking, charging up the tier. And at the end of the day, Wicked decided not to use that on top of the force. Without ignite, it's not really kill potential from that amount of hit points on Rise. No, certainly agree with that one. Uh, and actually said Yellow Pete has done 
really an incredible job here in this top lane. I mean, we can see there he is at level 7 now compared to level 7 of Tabs as well. And he's really not that far behind on farm. Just 4 CS behind, which considering that's a double kill first blood BF sword Caitlyn already, He's doing so amazingly well. This, this is it's something, now a bloodthirster, though. This is something I'd love to talk to some of the other AD carry and support players and say, well, how do you deal with that? Like, if you're in that position, what could Tabs and We Will Failure have done differently to make that advantage grow? Should they have spent that money early on? Is that the mistake? Did they not use the early advantage to their favor? Or, you know, did they hit this power peak at an earlier stage? You know, it's something I'd love to talk to some of the pro players about and find out some of their opinions, because there's going to be a lot of varying arguments on the topic. Right now, Wicked is actually ahead in that bottom lane. In the middle, 93 to 86, Froggen did use his laser actually to uh, clear out that last wave. He's going to be going home now. He's slightly ahead in that one, but Vladimir should catch up by the time that Wicked, uh, sorry, the Frogum actually does get back into that lane. And now, in terms of the junglers, both Snoopy and Dexter have been relatively quiet after that start. As we are going to see Wicked going in at the bottom with the unstoppable force on towards Zoro Zero. Got him down to about a quarter of his health, but more he can't manage at this point. No, not right now. He doesn't have any additional ability power to really you know, force Zoro Zero down, but a good engagement, keeping it in control and keeping the lane in his favor up until that trade where Zoro Zero now takes the advantage. The fact that he's got a bigger mana pool means Wicked may not have a full combo. If he sticks around to defend, they may try dive him with Dex's ultimate. Yep, there is the Spirit Fire down as well, just going to be clearing out those minions before they get into Ward Street range. They're all minions that Wicked is missing here as well as the next wave does come down. And whilst Dexter didn't really have a chance of picking up a kill there, he has forced Wicked to back away somewhat and allow them to get a bit of damage down onto that bottom. So it's around about half HP currently. The biggest trend that we've seen throughout this weekend is who can make their opponent's top lane suffer the most. Nukeduck almost gets lasered down. I don't think it would have been enough damage to kill him. And you can see now at 12 minutes, Zoro Zero 64 CS, Malphite 63 CS. And it's been the, the trend of every single LCS game that we've, we've you know, shoutcasted this weekend. Top lane is just really struggling and suffering. Nuketuck taking a lot of poke for Froggen. Yeah, Froggen's been a real ir uh, irritation, is the word I'm trying to get out. Wicked down in the bottom lane. He's going to get room prison up, and there's a kill for Dexter. Finished off nicely, playing very, very patient, just waiting around this entire time. They both did that with a very low mana pool, but it was enough in the end. Froggen in this middle lane is putting so much damage down onto, nu uh, onto Nuketuck. Problem is, though, He's got that sustain here in the lane. Unless he can get to that point where he can literally erase him, he's going to keep doing that. Top lane as well, sorry. There is a tidal wave coming in. Crepo actually managing to block the ace in the hole there. And Tabs couldn't quite get the final touches onto Yellow P. Yeah, really good play. Now there's Nuketuck. He's ghosted up. He's chasing Frog and Hemoplague's down. Yeah, Hemoplague is in there. He's not going to follow up on it, though. Frog will lose a little bit of health. There's a chance here that the turret in the top lane might go down, if not with this wave, but with the next one going in. I mean, that is a bloodthirster that Tabs has right now at 13 minutes in. It's already been done for a good four minutes, I'd say, uh, up to now as well as Nukeduk here. He's going to be engaged upon by Snoopy, who then sees that Nasus is there and will slide away. That is a fully stacked bloodthirster, and with that, as well as the tower in the top lane, now Tabs is in the very strong position. This is basically what those double kills early on have provided him. That tower in the top lane, as well as that fully stacked bloodthirster at this stage in the matchup. Snoopy's doing the best he can to defend this mid lane, but Nuketuck has still not recalled since all that damage he's taken from Froggen because he's got a spirit of the spectral wraith, he's got that spell vamp, he's just going to be life stealing his way back up and I don't think he should ever get erased by Froggen because his sanguine pool should be saved to dodge the laser and as long as he does that, he should practically be unkillable. Yeah, I don't think there's a, another chance apart from if he you know, missed times that or what have you with that laser coming in so should be fairly safe on that front, we'll see if the uh, Froggen actually decides to get himself involved on other fronts here. They may need a bit of help in this bottom lane because the tower, since we last talked about it, has gone down even further. But EG have brought their AD carry now. 
the support will join them in a second, but that might just be too late. Yeah, the tower's definitely going to go down. They're just going to bash this one. Away. Four members of Lemon Dog securing the second tower of the game. We noticed that uh, Yellow Peak was charging up his piercing arrow. He's actually maxing his Q over his E. This is a patch where the damage was shuffled around from the Hail of Arrows to the piercing arrow. And it's actually good to notice that he is ranking his Q. That also could have been because he needed to farm from a distance at those early, early levels. So and this timing is perfect as well from Lemon Dog's. Push that tower down, push the wave out completely, and there is the dragon coming back into play. We saw it soloed by uh, Dexter when he got to level six. There's the laser a little bit too early from Froggen, and that means it's just actually the damage to make uh, Lemon Dogs do it quicker. Now, the thing that's fantastic about that play from Lemon Dogs is it just shows such a maturity in their understanding of the game. They grouped up a minute before the dragon spawned to push the tower down as a four-man to get deep wards to take the dragon uncontested. That all started oh. from a good call. Now, Wicked's going to fight Nuke Duck. Uh, bottom lane is where it's really at, though. Actually, Yellow Pete has got caught out of position completely and acing the whole bit of an overkill there. will actually get them your kill as we are going to see that the tidal wave come in and Tabs actually getting away from this one. Wicked now, maybe the one in all kinds of trouble. Zoro Zero coming in. There's a wild growth put down by Crepo. Have they got the damage? Room Prison comes in. He's put in the air by the bubble and finished off by Tabs. Snoopy was trying to get into position quickly enough, but he simply could not close the gap that he needed to close. Nuke Duck, the Hemo play is off cooldown, so I believe he threw that down onto Froggen, who's missing a lot of hit yep. points. Zara Zero is caught Snoopy. Yeah, they're gonna keep going for this one, and in the end, backing away, this is a turret. And I just wanna comment on that play at the bottom lane there. Uh, if we just look at the bush, just on the right-hand side by the golems, there's a pink ward inside that. Now, there was, before that, an EG ward in there. They pink warded it, cleared it out, and then did a loop around and sat in that bush until Yellow Pete went one step too far in that bottom lane made him pay for it, and that leaves us with a 4-0-0 Caitlyn with a fully stacked Bloodthirster and a Last Whisper. Yeah, that's pretty much GG as far as damage is concerned. Snoopy is jumping onto Dexter. Dexter's caught up, lasers down. And this is surely a Dexter that's not escaping, and Snoopy just slashes him down with that Dragon Strike to finish things off. And, well, that's a bonus for EG at this point, but they need more of that. They need four or five of those in a row here, and especially one onto Caitlyn would be a big, big bonus. I would dare say that that kill would have been much better on Froggen than on Jarvan, getting yeah. that extra damage down. Look at that single transfusion. Just chunk Snoopy's HP. He doesn't have any additional, you know, real statistics as far as defenses are concerned. He's just got that Elder Lizard, which is regen. That's it, regen and, and CDR. He's got no additional HP, no additional MR outside of his runes and masteries, and the amount of damage that Caitlyn and, and, and uh, Vladimir are putting down, they're just going to shred through him completely. Yeah, with that Abyssal Scepter now that Vladimir has got finished off as well, it's looking very good for Nuke Duck and the rest of his team. Obviously those dragons helping out the three turrets to zero that they are currently in the lead. And it's going to have to be a bit of a turnaround here from Evil Geniuses. But they are a team of the caliber that could definitely turn a deficit like this around. Wicked currently does have the Haunting guys in there, along with that Chalice and the Crystalline Flask and Booster Speed from a little bit earlier on. Yellow Peep finally getting up to his first big item, picking up that Blade of the Ruin Kick. So I'll take a look at this. That's a great laser tap. He's going down. He's going very, very low here, but will he be able to survive? Ace in the hole comes out the tidal wave as well, and Froggen is going to die. We will fail it and picks that one up, and that was incredible stuff. There is the ultimate B news as well out of NASA's, and after all, all that Crepo has gone very low, somehow surviving there right at the back as Yellow P comes through. He's going to get pulled by the bubble. He's going to die as Wicked comes across from the side. He got one. New Duck went around the side. Wicked is still trying to chase down the Wither, slowing him to a crawl, and he won't be able to finish off a crazy bit of action. New Duck's coming in it from ends behind. A three versus one, and New Duck is coming in from behind. He's not going to have the damage to take down Wicked and Snoopy together, though. But Crucially, those Lemon Dogs players that were all so, so low survived the encounter. And let the, the, what was being highlighted there by our cameraman, Panky, was that Nuke Duck snuck behind and actually killed Crepo behind enemy lines before joining the mid lane. Yeah. The fact that everybody went so low from Lemon Dogs was uh, an attest in, well, great play by Evil Geniuses to try and make it stick, but because they weren't grouped and because it was a pick, and the Froggen caught out Tabs and we will fail her. Luckily, by approaching from the side, that wasn't a team fight. That wasn't a prep prepared thing. And because of it, EG couldn't close it out. They did the best they could, but being so far behind meant they couldn't actually make those last hits count. And that's 
really what they've got to rely on here. They've got to have Frog and catching people out the entire time. They've got to pick up these opportunist kills. And for them, the most disappointing thing will probably be that Tab went so, so very low after that. He's worth a lot of money right now at 4-0, but they couldn't shut him down. Ignite was not used by Lux because Froggen had been caught by the Aqua Prison and the bubble. It was thrown up into the air, and I, I think it was actually out of range of Caitlyn, which is why that last 180 or 200 hit points was not actually taken down. Snoopy, that failed. laser, that even <laughs> failed as well. I mean, Snoopy's going to end up taking the blue buff because Froggen miscalculated his damage. He fired the laser too early, or, you know, Snoopy stopped auto-attacking. Um, and basically it just shows you the state of Evil Geniuses in this game right now. They're not communicating as effectively as they need to be. Yeah, it seems their heads are uh, a little bit all over the shop at this point of things. Let's see if they can uh, manage to get the turnaround on that one though. We've got 20 minutes down on the clock right now and it's not that far away from a 10,000 gold lead for the Lemon Dogs at this point. And that is bad, bad news for Evil Geniuses. The Oracle is on for We Will Failer as well. So he's going to be clearing out everything that Crepo can put down. So the, the dragon should be spawning very, very shortly if my time is correct, around 21 minutes. And you can see that by We Will Failer moving, placing some wards in and around the dragon entry and exits, that they'll have vision of anyone coming in. Because they've got such a good gold advantage, if Evil Geniuses wanted to pick a fight, they'd pretty much welcome it and say, well, you know, we, we're in a much stronger position. We're happy to battle this one out. And I do think it'll be up very, very soon. The one thing that Evil Geniuses does have in their favor, which other Wombo Combo compositions don't have, is that Lux can make a pick happen from range. With the Malphite and Orianna, you've got to dive in, which means you really got to pick your opportunity well. Whereas with the Lux, you can make that pick from a much safer distance by catching someone else. So the, the onus is now on, on what I believe Frog into Mike, a good light binding, maybe Yellow Pete to get a good chain of corruption, and then follow that up with kills. We've just seen that dragon go down, and it just shows you how perfect Lemon Dogs are with the timing right now as well. The Spirit Fire literally down a split second before Dragon actually came into play. So on all fronts at this point, Lemon Dogs are not looking like the new team here in this game. No, not at all. It's definitely not a team that's lost two games. Now, Wicked has managed to catch up. We will fail a little bit out of position. He does have that Oracles, which makes him a very, very juicy target. But Wicked not willing to throw that unstoppable force. Doesn't want to use it willy-nilly and decides to back away safely. Pretty much wants to make it you know, the best opportunity or make the best play with that ability. Right now, Nuke Duck, you just saw in there, is pushing that top lane down. We are going to see the Chain of Corruption coming out. Yellow Peak losing a lot of health, and look at that, almost taken down. And that is a lot of abilities used on towards the Malphite Frog, and he's going to be going low as well. Warrior Throws will save him. Will they get away with Wicked's life? He gets shielded up by Crepo. And honestly, Crepo there has kept them in this fight. Will they keep Snoopy alive as well? Somehow, yes. Look at the health bars on the left-hand side. That is ridiculous stuff. Crepo, man of the fight there. Without him, at least two of them would have been dead. Yeah, definitely. Not, a, not a, 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 a joke about that. The wild growth managing to save Lux. Then, of course, the shields coming out and the slows was fantastic. The entire time, there. The entire time that was happening, Nuketak is pushing this top lane. He's a very slow tower pusher, but is still able to get it down with the assistance of the creeps. The middle tower went down as well. So, even though Evil Genius has tried to make a fight happen, because they lost the fight, they lost two more towers and are now 10,000 gold behind. 10,000 gold. Not to be uh, laughed at here from EG's standpoint. You see there, actually, uh, Rice is pushing out the bottom frog and half of his HP gone there in one blast from Nuke Duck. And that is not good news for him whatsoever. He's got that needlessly large rod now added in onto uh, the Morella Nomicon. Doesn't roll off my tongue quite so well as it probably should still at this point of the game. We'll see what he can do with it. Like you said, the earlier kill that went to Snoopy probably would have been better suited to landing on Frogham because he's their opportunist in this game. Yeah, exactly. And he's the one that needs the damage to pop people. And, you know, if he'd had a little bit more damage, say, for example, you know, uh, for that catch onto Tabs, maybe he could have killed Tabs, you know? If he'd had that extra bit of ability power and had you know, the, the bonus damage on his Q, E, and R respectively, it may have been added up to that additional 180. The one thing that I do see that's coming out of uh, Nuke Duck's build, he's got that needlessly large rod plus an amplifying tone. Now, I would have thought he wanted to go something like an hourglass first to get that troll pool and survivability, but because they are so far ahead, I think he's going to go for a deathfire grasp next. 
you know, max out his CDR and as well have that, you know, death by glass proc. Here comes the tidal wave and Lemon Dogs want to play. Yep, they're going to go over this one. That's a big dive in from Snoopy. The Hemo Ooh. plague, though, is down there. Is a laser coming out Ooh. from the side as well. But Nuketuk is going to be able to take down one and they're not done just yet. Here comes the push around the back. Zoro Zero is going to nail down Yellow P. Can they finish off any more? Froggen is hit by the ace in the hole. He's going to try and dodge this one like a bit of a ninja. But honestly, this is a big team chasing him down. Dexter gets hit by the light binding and Froggen is still running here for his life. The rest of Lemon Dogs coming around. We will fail her. He's going to round the corner, spot himself a Froggen, and Zoro Zero is going to finish him off. Actually got the bounce from the Wolves. Yeah, managed to get that one out. Now take a look at the play. And look what set that up in one of the big misplays. Wicked missed his uh, unstoppable force. He tried to hit Vlad before the Sanguine Pool went down. He didn't manage to hit him, and that meant that that ability was wasted. He hit nobody up in the air. Nuketuck then flashed out of the laser. The fight continued, a lot of damage back and forth, and Nuketuck was caught up by a light binding. That held him in place just long enough for the chain of corruption to catch him out and actually manage to pick up that kill. So, you know, very good combo to at least pick up one kill, but overall, Lemon Dog's just in control of the fight and really determining the pace of it. And that's without Nasus even using his ultimate in there. Didn't even need it uh, at that point. Lemon Dog's increased their lead. 11,000 gold now and counting at the 25 minute mark of this matchup. Have a look down some of the items that were finished off here recently. A runic bulwark now added in for that NASA is going to give them that extra bit of defense. I also realized that I've had a bit of a, a, a mind, a brain fart. The Seeker's Arm God that is built from Azonia's Outlaws it does two cloths and an amplifying an, uh, tone. No. Yeah, I forgot that there was three tiers to that build. So it does look like he's going to be going for the hourglass first, which is the smart move for Nuketuck. It would have allowed him to survive by, you know, using that additional uninterruptible attack. And basically, we were saying how important it was for Vladimir to be in these team fights, and that was the exact reason. Evil Genius has spent all their time focusing Vlad, which gave Tabs free reign to deal damage, Rise free reign to get his spell costs out, and basically. If you focus Vlad, then everyone else kills you. If you focus everyone else, Vlad kills you. So it's a win-win situation for Lemon Dogs. They'll lose one, but kill three. Right, he's got the uh, Archangel staff now, and that's actually going to become a Zerf's Embrace very, very shortly here. Uh, it was already over 700 uh, stacks in that, so he's going to be at there very, very soon. On the other side, Negatron Cloak actually added in here for Caitlyn, as well as that Zeal. So I mean, you can't even compare the AD carries at this point in the game. I mean, we couldn't really compare them after two minutes either. So uh, just generally, that's a losing battle, I think, for Evil Geniuses. Right now, they're stacked a little bit around the middle. There are a lot of things going on here. It looks like EG might try and finally finish off this turret. So they had a little bit of vision. They've jumped onto Dexter. Yeah, but that's Dexter. That is Nasus. He's going to actually use his ultimate. The tidal wave comes in and look at him. He's still got a quarter of his health remaining as Noob Duck comes around the back. Where's the Hemo play going to come down here? They're spreading themselves out as much as they possibly can from this one. Ace in the hole. Blocked by Krepo, but the Hemo Plague is on. He will shield himself up after that. Tabs did take down Wicked in the end, and that will be a one-for-one. One. So that is a one-for-one one trade, but Evil Geniuses get the tower, so they get that global gold, which means they do come out in the stronger position. However, the fact that they've all got a recall base and heal means they may lose another tower, or what looks like Baron. At the moment, Tabs and We Will Fail are rushing up there as quickly as possible, and we can see that Zoro Zero's rise is in the area, but I don't think they're going to start it. They may just decide to play this one safe. Oh, there is Nuke Duke actually uh, doing himself the dragon on the top side. We Will Fail actually did get hit a couple of times by the Baron. Nothing serious for him there. Vladimir going to be finishing that one off. He must have, yeah, it's at around about 1,100 gold right now, 1,000 gold for Ryze as well, who uh, now got that Negatron cloak in with that completed Zeros Embrace. On the other side, Banshee's Veil was finished off by Caitlyn. Now, I'm really happy to see that from Tabs. You know, he, he comes from the AP mid-roll, he realizes when you get ahead, you've got a lot of damage. The best thing that you can actually do is survive long enough to keep dealing damage. So, not only has he got all that additional MR to survive the burst that Lux is putting down, as well as Malphite, he's going to be able to block one of the spells. So, they're going to need to... Which could be in an unstoppable force. Correct, balls. correct. All the light binding, the light binding that catches him blind when he's walking around a corner or checking, you know, face checking a bush. That's going to prevent him being rooted. It's going to prevent him being instantly held in place to be popped. Right now, though, Evil Genius is there holding on for dear life and that 11,000 gold gap does get smaller the later the game goes. 
but I am being extremely optimistic here as the gap is it, what appears to be insurmountable right now. So we talked about this one uh, earlier with Meet Your Makers about finishing games. Interested to see how Lemon Dogs are going to go about this one because honestly they've got those inner turrets down on the top and bottom lane but they've not really done a massive amount with it since we spent a lot of time here hanging around the middle lane. So we'll touch on that in a second as it does look like Evil Geniuses may actually get caught out. Wither is down but it's on Wicked and it's not the end of the world if he can't move because he's going to throw himself at you with that unstoppable force. If Lemon Dogs group up Evil Geniuses may throw caution to the wind and dive in. It definitely gets, this is the sense that we're getting from Evil Geniuses. They want to make a fight happen in their favor. The waves are pushing in their favor in, I believe, the bottom lane and the top lane. So they've got a little bit of time to play with. And it's just a matter of who goes first. Greffo just putting a ward into Baron Pins. It's a setup, guys. Run away. Let's not stay there. Oh, they're still posturing around. There's the, the massive standard thrown down. Just for vision, just making sure yeah. that they're not doing Baron. So, at the moment, Dexter and Zara Zero playing, you know, they're, they're baiting at the moment. Nuketuck is just farming away in the mid lane, 270 CS. He continues to you know, gain his levels. He is max level at the moment. And we do see that Lemon Dogs, they have actually started off Baron. And we do see Dexter's popped his ultimate very early. So, if a fight does break out, the duration on that ultimate is not going to last very long. The Baron HP is on the left. Nuketuck's gone low. He's gone very, very low. He's going to pull out. Actually, we'll have to flash there in the end. The rest of Lemon Dogs, though. Are they going to go in? They're a little bit wedged in here. The Baron is still going down. It's down to half HP. In the end, they back away, but EG now have the advantage of saying, okay, if you leave, we can keep that one tagged up and keep the damage coming in. In the end, they'll just go to the middle. They're quite happy to have stopped that from happening. I have to question the decision to throw all of those ultimates at a Vladimir. Throw all those ultimates at one guy, even if you killed him. It's still going to be 5 versus 4 against a 5-0-4 Caitlyn. What do you do against them? How do you turn and face the rest of your you know, opponent's team who are this well farmed and this well fed? So it ended up not paying off. They didn't kill anybody, but nobody died either. And Baron wasn't lost. So overall, it equated to nothing. But I'm not quite sure on the decision making. Ravdon's death cap now is done by uh, Frogon. We just saw him up getting that blue buff. Zoro Zero farming his way through as well. Got that Spirit Visage now added into things, which makes him less burstable as well to the likes of uh, Wicked and, of course, to Frogon as well. And that increases all of the healing effects as well. So when he activates his ultimate and gets all of that spell vamp up, he's going to be regenerating more HP in a fight. So you've got a Vlad that is going to get massive, massive spell vamp. You've got a Rise that's got massive spell vamp. I would love to see a, a Wota being picked up for this team just because it's going to benefit everybody so incredibly well. Even Nasus's ultimate and his Spirit Fire's magic damage, he could benefit from some spell vamp as well. You were talking about how they finish games earlier. Ninjas in pajamas managed to hold out against Lemon Dogs for a very, very, very long time, and they were a massive amount behind. And it comes down to the fact that in solo queue games, Lemon Dogs will have won the game by now. If you if they play a 5v5 ranked or they play, you know, an online team, generally at the LCS level, they'll be able to finish it very quickly. But they don't know how to get past those second, those inner turrets to the inhib turrets with this very big advantage. It's something that they'll want to be learning as they may try to make a gamble. Yellow Pete's going to get caught by this wither. Oh, they're going to go for the play. There is a tidal wave coming over. Yellow Pete already at half HP. That is a good cataclysm from Snoopy. He's going to keep them locked up, but it won't matter for Yellow Pete. He goes down. Wicked is actually going to have to use his flash to get over by the wolves. He will fall to Zoro Zero. And this may just be the opening that Lemon Dogs have been looking for. They've not really lost any health even uh, never mind a man from that last fight and EG now with only three men left alive Crepo here gonna get all the attacks coming out of Zoro Zero and there is the final inner turret taken down by Lemon Dogs looks like they may just go home to be honest I quite fancy their chances at Baron by now that was such a great play from the Lemon Dogs not only did the call come in from Dexter saying look I found Yellow Pete I can wither him I can go I can go he ghosted up immediately we actually seen we will fail coming in from the side you can see that little ward by the race camp he came in from there, put the tidal wave down in time to actually catch Yellow Pete even after he flashed. So it was a prediction ulti. It caught them, it locked up Evil Geniuses, and it put Lemon Dogs in a very powerful position in their team fight. So very well played to, but you know, by them. Actually playing their comp the way EG want to play theirs. Finding an opportunity, catching them, and killing them. I am surprised though that they didn't just back off to Baron there. I mean, they still had that Hemo Plague up, they still had an ace in the hole available as well, and there were only three men left alive for EG, but 
Don't want to risk anything. That's the name of the game right now for Lemon Dogs. So my, my understanding or my thinking here from the Lemon Dogs, or at least from, from how we can see them playing, I don't know if they understand quite how far ahead they are. I think that the Lemon Dogs realize that they're very, very strong. Ooh, damage onto New Duck. Turn him into a critter. Oh, oh. Um, so they realize they're very strong, but I don't think they realize that they could pretty much outright win any fight that they pick. And that's why they're playing very defensively. It was a similar situation against uh, Ninjas and Pajamas. They were very strong. Wither might come down. Dexter is going to avoid that life binding. And Wither's very, very strong. Dexter looking like he wants to go in. There may be another fight here. <laughs> Greppo almost been sniped down there in the gap between uh, his teammates. We will fail to take some damage back. I mean, Froggen is hurting right now. There's no doubt about that one. The question is, can he hurt them enough? Can he knock them down? I mean, Tabs have talked about it already. That Banshee's Veil already offers him so much protection from the likes of Froggen as Baron is going to get started off here. Evil Genius is coming to the top side. Wither actually going down here on towards Wicked. Look at Nuke Duck. He's thinking about an attack maybe from the side or even from the back of the team. But he has this been could be spotted the game by fight. that ward. This could be very, very bad. Oh, Evil Genius is Wicked caught. gets caught up here. There goes a the tidal wave across them. Wicked did get unstoppable force off, but that won't matter too much as Nuketo goes right into the middle of them there. He's going to heal himself up. They continue to push forward, and after that, he will decide to back away. It gives them a 5v4 up Baron. They're not super healthy, but with the lifesteal and up. that spell vamp that they've got in there, they could be able to get away. We'll see how this laser is going to be effective because it is very powerful, but Froggen does still have his ignite, and there's a fair amount of HP on Yellow Pete. The key is for Dexter and Nuke Duck to jump onto Yellow Pete to control this engagement. 16 to 4 up. The laser's down. Nuke Duck got hurt. Does manage to survive. Yep, hurt but not taken down. The important factor in that one. And Evil Genius is now trying to buy themselves a bit of time in this middle lane without those creeps by pushing them straight up towards that inner turret. And considering how far behind they are, and with uh, just three men here in this middle lane, they're not doing a bad job whatsoever of actually pushing out. That's very, very good play from Evil Genius, because they actually pinged the raid camp, and were like, if they come, this is where they come from, watch, watch, watch. And you, you can actually hear the thinking of Frog and saying, well, if they come from that route, I'll light binding up, I can trap them, we can get this tower and back away safely, because there's no way for them to come from any other direction. So a calculated, informed risk, even if there was any aggression, they could lock it down. Very big minion wave was being demonstrated there. Might get that bottom lane tower, but it does look like Tabs there to defend it. And yet another dragon goes the way of Lemon Dogs. Evil Geniuses are only contesting Baron, but nothing else right now. Yeah, Prepo is trying to get rid of wards around Baron. He's trying to gain the advantage when it comes to that area of the map, getting rid of those traps from Caitlyn as well. We do have full vision of the Baron pit itself. Lemon Dogs got a couple of wards at the back side of things. And we see Yellow Pete picking up a pickaxe which uh, will be going with that longsword in towards the Last Whisper. So that's another nice addition to him. And the thing is, the longer this game goes on, the more the EG are going to be feeling comfortable about picking a fight. And, well, at the, same, at the same token, the longer the game goes on, it only takes one mistake from Lemon Dogs to lose the game. There's one, one problem with that. And that is the fact that the Lemon Dogs team will outscale the Evil Geniuses team. Rise, Nasus, and Vladimir are going to get more and more and more powerful. And eventually, I feel that Yellow Pete's uh, Varus kit will outscale that of Caitlyn. But Caitlyn's range is just so incredibly strong that it, it almost balances out the roots and the percentage HP damage. Speaking of which... And this is what one of the very, very big strengths. Evil Genius is going to be well aware of this threat. Snoopy is moving around and he's very close to being room twisted up by Zoro Zero. It does look like another fight's going to break out. Lemon does a split. There we go, the late He's there going, he gets the steal! Frogan has managed to steal it. No, it was Snoopy who actually smiled it down. Very last second, but can they get away? There's the unstoppable the force. They managed two more kills. Tams has still got his punch veil up here as he tries to run out the backside. Can they lock him down? He flashes over just as he gets turned and polymorphed in there. But what a turnaround from EG. And there is the danger of the Baron when you're so far ahead in a game. My brain cannot comprehend how Evil Genius has just won that fight. They managed to pick up two kills. They managed to smite steal Baron and get away practically unscathed. That should not be possible when a team is that far ahead. Lemon Dogs being split up, not being grouped, not picking a fight, and because they weren't all together on one objective doing one game plan, 
They got caught up. Evil Genius is on the inhibitor turret. It's going down. Let's see if they can uh, push any further than this so that inhibitor does go down. Can they take the inhib with them? There they go on towards Zoro Zero. Has to back away. Evil Geniuses have the bonus of that regen here from the Baron. They can back out and go back in. <laughs> Wicked literally a rock there as he can't move with the wither on him, but back down to a 9,000 gold lead only now and evil geniuses this is what we talked about a one mistake could bring them right back into the game so the Baron buff now is actually gonna make up that gold difference even though lemon dogs are 10,000 gold ahead the statistics that the Baron buff is gonna give every single member of EG is basically gonna nullify that it's gonna close it up they've caught out Dexter he's been knocked up Dexter is far too far forward here in the middle lane let's see if they can get the finisher the wild growth comes down for the knockoff Dexter finished off they want it's the Jordan. idiot they want the in here. They're going to be able to force this down. They know that Zoro Zero is in the top lane. He should be able to get back and, you know, at least try to defend. And there's so much pressure on Nuke Duck. He needs to clean up. He needs a five-man Hemo Plague, and he needs to get a triple kill if he wants to hold this inhibitor. And I feel like Lemon Dogs may not even contest this. They've lost that big tanky Nasus here, and that inhibitor is going to go down. Would you believe it? The first inhibitor of this game goes to Evil Geniuses. Unbelievable play from Evil Geniuses. They did not make a mistake. They had to, you know, dance in the, the, the I don't know, there was, a, there was a sliver that they were trying to balance on, and they managed to do it. They held off, what was it, three Baron attempts. They prevented one of them basically with a laser, and they managed to steal it and get the first inhibitor. That is fantastic play out of them, and Lemon Dogs will be feeling the pressure of those two losses earlier in the day, and it's definitely going to be playing on their minds. Yeah, and this is where we were really going to see how good Lemon Dogs are. You know, we've seen them beat teams in more standard ways, but being ahead and then feeling that horrible feeling of a comeback happening to you, are they going to be able to deal with that pressure? Are they going to be able to push forward? This here is a very interesting way to do things. This is how they actually picked on Bjergsen in the previous game. And I, I distinctly remember them being very, very patient. Right now, Evil Genius, this is such a juicy wave. Wicked, is, he's put a ward down. Very, very small play. I think Wicked's sixth sense, his spider senses were tingling and saying something is a bit fishy here, guys. He's put a ward down. And I just want to touch on some items that are very, very key. Just because of this last passage of play, Void Soft, Chirelia, Sunfire Cape, Lost Whisper, and another Sunfire Cape have been picked up by the side of Evil Geniuses. So that massive, massive item deficit is being balanced out as this game goes longer. Incredible matchup here. 41 minutes in. Evil Geniuses are going for turret number five, and they'll take it without a problem. They've still got a bit of time left on that Baron Buff. It is only a bit of time, but that might just be enough to get this inner turret and level us up on turret kills at this point. I never really thought that I'd be saying that. We've given up on this game. Yeah, I pretty much had given up on this game, and I think a lot of people had as well. Evil Geniuses, though, definitely not giving up on that one. And they will continue forward. If any team is going to fight on any stage, it's going to be Evil Geniuses at DreamHack. They've made it to two consecutive, two back-to-back -back grand finals, winter and summer last year. Now for the LCS, they're playing and from a 15, 16,000 gold deficit. They pick up the first inhibitor. They pick up the first Baron of a smite steal thanks to Snoopy, somebody who has been questioned so much in the spring split. And you cannot argue with his play in this game right now. I don't know what it is about comebacks and evil geniuses here at DreamHack, but they certainly know how to do it in front of this crowd. They're still hanging around in that bottom lane. They're still pushing back. The top lane has been pushed by a big wave of minions here. And Lemon Dogs are going to have to do something about this one. They've lost that inner turret. We're now tied on turrets. Are we going to see the fight kicking off? Look at Nuketak's position. He's off on the side. Snoopy's trying to run interference. There's the fight. There we go. They're going to see the tidal wave coming. Wicked going low and finished up the lane. It comes to Kratso. It's a double kill. Nuketak's a little bit too far away from the rest of his team. Kratso turns around. Wild growth goes on to Snoopy. Nuketak uses the Zonias. The Zoro Zero gets involved, but it's Yellow Pete that picks up that one. Zoro Zero trying to finish up Frog, and he will get the shut down and evil geniuses are they gonna back away no yellow feet stays and pays the price look at the minions look at the minions in the top lane the inhibitor was down those minions have a massive amount of hp on every single lane the minions are doing the work for evil geniuses they lost the team fight or actually they tied it up three to three but they were happy to drag it out they were happy to die and have those death timers because the map is in their favor the minions are pushing the lanes they got two turrets in that top lane and the mid inhibitor is about to respawn evil geniuses are not out of this game. They are definitely not out of this game. 
And I said it earlier that he just needs one little mistake, and we saw that at the Baron. That has completely turned things around. Evil Genius is going to come back into play. You see the uh, the death times right now. Froggen, at this point, still has 20 seconds until he spawns in. One we are at the, get at the point in the game where it comes down to one big fight, one mistake, one face check, which could ruin it or make the game for one of these teams. There's, it's, it, I would love to know what the aggregate game time is for an Evil Genius's match in comparison to every other team that is, <laughs> that is in the LCS, for example, because they sure do put on classics and put on shows for the first time in 44 minutes. I believe the Dragon has been touched by the Evil Genius's team. I don't think they've touched a single Dragon prior to this, so this is a testament to the presence they now have on the map. They are pushing out, they are fighting for objectives and they're able to pick that one up. The gold still sits at 8,000, but with all the towers down, with the item you know, crescents being reached, are we at this point that Evil Geniuses can make that pick? Because without a pick, they can't win a team fight. Team fight power is still with Lemon Dogs. Do not forget that. Taps, by the way, we should mention, is 7-0-7 seven, seven right now. He had that brilliant start, getting his double kill with the first blood. Baron is now back on the map. This is going to be another big contestion point for both of these teams. As we see Oracle's pretty much all over the place. Froggen's got one, Crepo's got EG one. EG have the vision advantage here. They've cleared up the wards. They know that the Fog of War is up and that Lemon Dogs will be needing to either put wards down or to check it. They have vision in the Baron pit, so if a ward goes down, they'll move in and they'll clear it. They're waiting for Lemon Dogs to react. And if EG are proactive and get a pick onto a priority target, Kate, Rise of Vlad, they can win a team fight. If they do not insta-give someone... Oh, there it is! is on. There's the insta-give! Froggen, with the help of the ward, catches We Will Fail her out. And we talk about ultimates being used on support players. Now it's not always good, but the laser is Lemon such Dogs a short cooldown. Lemon Dogs thought they went for Barrett. That's why they're trying to rush, but Evil Geniuses couldn't contest. They, don't, they didn't want to jump in on that fight. Lemon Dogs are in the bottom side of their jungle, and what are EG going to do now? Are it's they going to go straight up middle here? They've got very, very quick clear times on those inhibs. This is going to be a race. If, if the recalls get in time, they're not going to get inhibited, so they might decide to just go for Baron. Still 30 seconds on the clock for We Will Fail as Nami. So this is going to be the second Baron of the game going to Evil Geniuses. Here we go then. Baron started already down to half HP. Froggen is waiting at the side and he's actually going to get the binding on one. It hits Oro Zero as well, but he had There's that Blanche's Veil available. Prepo going to get withered up. There is Miss. the ultimate whip from Yellow P and he's going to get destroyed straight away here. The rest of the team going down though. Tabs will actually bring one back and Evil Geniuses have been destroyed in the Baron pit and there is four kills. Froggen walks away. Ace in the hole going to come through. That's half of his health gone. Surely now with a 60 second spawn timer, Evil Geniuses who have done all the work to come back in this are going to lose the game. There's no, I, I do not think it's possible for Froggen to defend this. We'll see if, if he can prove us wrong. Right now the fact that Tab survived. Tab was the focus. He got hit by the laser. He got hit by the unstoppable force. He got hit by the cataclysm he got hit by everything no no I cannot believe this evil genius has not only put on one hell of a show the curse of the reconnect the curse of the connection issues continues to plague them Froggen Froggen bro why are you gonna DDoS the stream well we have uh, our admins here to uh work on this one so it does and look like yeah, I think it's going to be GG's it. called. I think they've called it, it. it's been called I, mean, I think that's, that's it was the pretty obvious there the Froggen yep. was being attacked by Nuke Dog in the bottom tri bush there and that is a victory for Lemon Dogs I mean a fantastic game here 48 minutes let's call it on the clock there by the end and it had everything Kudos the comeback the Baron steal the so, uh, the, that, that game, I expect a 25 minute analysis from D-Man and Jason because there are so many things to talk about from the level one engage, the double kill to me questioning Tabs' BF sword purchase and then showing it was the right decision. Nine